Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. We played the same sports, we walked to school together, we walked home together. We were inseparable. He was my best friend. Former NFL player Rich Miano reveals how his brother's untimely death over 35 years ago still affects him. The work of a young Maui artist finds a national audience in a prestigious online publication. A cancer patient who has since passed on is remembered in an annual fun run at her alma mater. Middle school students in the Salt Lake District of Oahu explore the challenges faced by mothers deployed for military duty. And we'll go into the Hikino archives to see how some Windward Oahu elementary school students coped when their fathers were deployed. Plus, a basketball coach who is paralyzed from the waist down teaches his players valuable life lessons. All on this episode of Hikino, coming to you from Hongwanji Mission School, home of the Dolphins. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No. Can do! Welcome to Honganji Mission School, home of the Dolphins, right next to the Pali Highway in Nu'uanu Valley on the island of Oahu. Our school was founded in 1949 and was the first Buddha school outside of Japan. Our school belongs to the Jodo Shinshu sect of Buddhism, which was founded by Shinran Shonin, a Japanese Buddhist monk. The school was built for the children of the workers from Japan who came to Oahu. The mission statement of our school is developing children academically, physically, socially, and spiritually through programs guided by Buddhist values. With 348 students, our grade level span from preschool to eighth grade. Our first story by students at Mid-Pacific in the Manoa District of Oahu reveals how a tragic loss influenced the career of a well-known football player and coach. When I saw the grief on everybody's face, I knew right away that something serious had happened. We shared the same room, we played the same sports, we walked to school together, we walked home together. We were inseparable, but he was my best friend. Local football personality Rich Miano has achieved success as a player in the National Football League and as a college and high school coach. It all started during Mr. Miano's childhood when he played football with his brother Robert, but few know that he got his inspiration from his brother's tragic death. Robert lost his footing on a ledge at Spitting Cave in Port Lock. He fell hitting his head on the rocks and died less than a year after the Mianos moved to Hawaii from Massachusetts. It hits you so hard that obviously you're in denial in terms of it didn't happen. You, you want to cry and hug each other and, and, and wish that this is just one bad nightmare. And um, you know, when you come to the realization, it just, it just doesn't wear off. I, I guess the pain is so sharp that it's, you know, I, I, we all took it hard, but I think my mom and dad, because they're supposed to die before their children, um, took it even harder. And we were 6,000 miles away from our home, and Hawaii was a place where it was very foreign to us. We didn't understand it. We didn't enjoy it initially. To honor Robert, Mr. Miano wore his brother's jersey number, 38, throughout the majority of his career. My focus was on becoming stronger and becoming faster and becoming the best that I could be. I was fortunate enough to play for Kaiser High School, win a state championship, uh, make all state, and uh, it was the best time of my life. And I started to love Hawaii more than uh, anything else, and that probably made the pain and suffering a lot easier for my, my family and I because we started to really acclimate and, and just love this culture and love the people and love the land. Mr. Miano had a successful college career playing for the University of Hawaii. He became an all-whack defensive back in 1983 and 1984. In 1985, he was drafted in the sixth round by the New York Jets. It was the beginning of an incredible journey. I played for the New York Jets, Philadelphia Eagles, and Atlanta Falcons. Mr. Miano played in the NFL for 11 seasons, well above the average career of an NFL player, which today usually lasts between three and four seasons. 
you know, you can't play professional football your whole life. So I knew that when I was finished playing, my goal and dreams were to come back to the University of Hawaii and coach. As Mr. Miano's playing career came to a close, he became a coach for the University of Hawaii, then Kaiser High School. Despite all the money and fame, a day does not pass when Mr. Miano does not think of what happened on that tragic day. It's amazing how one day like that can change your life. And even though it was a tragedy, there's a lot of great things that have come out of that as well. But if all of us could have Robert back, we'd probably trade anything for that. This is Nick Hasegawa from Mid Pacific for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We're back at Hongwanji Mission School in the Nuuanu District of Oahu. A unique feature of our school is that there is an underground tunnel located under the Pali Highway that leads from the temple across the highway to our school. The tunnel was designated as a fallout shelter during the Cold War eras of the 1950s. Now we use the tunnel as a connector from the Hompa Hongwanji Hawaii Betsuen Temple to our school. In the morning, our parents drop us off in front of the tunnel. Then in the afternoon, our parents pick us up there. We take you now to the island of Maui, where students from H.P. Baldwin High School introduce us to a young artist who is well on her way to success in the world of online publications. It's like what I'm good at. Like some people are good at speaking or writing, and I'm better at like art and like trying to tell people how I feel. H.P. Baldwin High School sophomore Sophia Buse used to get in trouble for doodling in class, but recently she's turned her doodles into an opportunity for her future. Ricky Mag is a website for teenage girls, and it's a collection of artwork and photography and personal diaries and a whole bunch of really cool stuff. For many years, Sophia has been following Rookie Mag, a website for young teenage girls with over 150,000 followers on their social media sites. She also collects their yearbooks, a printed annual of that year's best works from their website. I remember getting yearbook number three in the mail, and I would read one page a day to make it last longer. One day, Sophia decided to reach out to Rookie. I made a pin of Toby Gevinson, the editor of Rookie Mag, on Instagram, and I tagged her in it, and then she saw it and emailed me later asking if I wanted to be a contributor. When she contacted me over email, I was very excited, and um, it was really weird because she, she was somebody I looked up to, and all of a sudden she was talking to me. <laughs> When Tavi gave me that first assignment, I was really nervous and I had a lot of pressure on me because it was a really hard topic to illustrate and I was looking at all the other artists' work and I just couldn't figure out how to illustrate it and it was really hard for me. I sometimes felt like my work wasn't of the quality of other people's work and like the contributors on the website, I felt like theirs, they worked harder and their work was much cooler than mine. Sophia finally built up the confidence to send in her work, and they loved it. Actually, that first illustration that I made got into the Rookie book this year. I was a big fan of Rookie, and I felt like I was an outsider looking into this community of inspiring people, and now I am in it, and I am part of it. I feel like living on Maui really like confines me for like doing big things. And this feels like I've been like transported, I guess. And now I feel like I can do a lot more things and people are reaching out to me. And I've just, it's really cool because they've really started talking to me. Along with these new opportunities, Sophia has learned a lot from her experience with Rookie. And it has helped her to make a clear vision for what she wants to do in the future. My work ethic has gone up a lot by, you know, having the pressure of a lot of people seeing my work. I feel like I have a larger portfolio that I can, you know, always refer to. And I've had a lot more connections now that I've joined Rookie. And I feel like I have a better future career in art. My advice to aspiring artists is that you should never be afraid to contact people who you want to work with and potentially see yourself talking to and you should always reach out and never be afraid to talk. Sophia has learned a lot through her experience with Rookie and she hopes to use these skills for a future career in art.
This is Morena Corday from H.P. Baldwin High School for Hikino. Our next story takes us to Waimea on Hawaii Island, where students at Hawaii Preparatory Academy take us on a fun run commemorating a beloved alumna. The Beanie Kohler Johnson 5K Fun Run and Dog Walk was established in 2009 in memory of Beanie, who was first diagnosed with cancer at age 38, losing her battle five years later. Beanie lived in Waimea throughout her childhood and attended Hawaii Preparatory Academy, graduating from there in 1983. During her high school career, Beanie ran cross country and track, as well as played soccer. She grew up here. She was seven years old when we came. And uh, so this was her home, and that was her last wish to come back. Beanie Kohler was a top-notch runner. Anything you wanted or needed from her, you just say, Beanie, we've got to have this position. She'd finish there and make any difference what. I love to watch her run because she was a beautiful runner. And on the picture that we chose, you can tell. Beanie battled breast cancer for five years and beat it the first time around. However, the cancer relapsed and she passed away in 2009. A beautiful soul. If yeah. anyone was a beautiful soul, it was Beanie Kohler. She so. was. Liz Natzel, a teammate and friend, created this fun run and dog walk with the goal of benefiting girls who attend HPA with similar qualities as Beanie. It's grown to be the school's largest scholarship fund and this year we're going to be able to give each girl $1,200 and it does follow them every year. They get it until they graduate. Beanie believed very much in good education and so that this would be a, a really nice legacy for her to help girls um, a little bit with that tuition. It's for scholarships for the students of Hawaii and it doesn't go into anybody's personal pocket. The importance of early detection is a message the organizers hope to spread through this event. Beanie was diagnosed before 40, but usually women are not tested before then. The goodie bags participants receive include information about the importance of early detection and self-exams for women, including a self-exam card. Get checked. <laughs> Often and on, you know, on time, make sure you don't miss those checks. Those checks are covered by insurance, so there's no reason not, not to get your mammograms. And if you've got any family history, start early. Beanie's very own son, Ryan, won the entire race this year. Little by little, anything helps. I, I feel like this helps a lot because it's a fun family event and you can still spread a good word at the same time. She was very loving. She was very giving, she was very courageous, obviously, and she was lots of fun. Though people do pass away, Beanie left with us a heightened awareness about cancer. Her personality was uplifting to all around her, and she will be honored through this race year after year. This is Carly Natzel from Hawaii Preparatory Academy for Hiki No. We are back at Hongwanji Mission School in Nuuanu on the island of Oahu. Behind me is the Fort Gakuen building, the oldest structure on our campus. The oldest section of the building was constructed in 1938, before the Pali Highway was here. Japanese language is taught in the Fort Gakuen building. At first, it was only taught as an after-school activity, but when the school expanded in the 1990s, it became a mandatory class in the school curriculum. Currently, Japanese is taught to all students who attend our school by three different teachers. Other classes, such as art, technology, and preschool are taught in the Fort Gakuin. Our next story comes from the Salt Lake District of Oahu, where students at Aliamanu Middle School tell of the challenges facing mothers deployed for active military duty. Being a mother who is on active military duty is a balancing act between service to one's country and dedication to one's family. For Jeannie Delion Guerrero, an Army Staff Sergeant stationed at Fort Shafter, it was only natural for her to answer the call to service. You know, hearing my dad's stories uh, when he was in the service, um, listening to uncles and my aunts of their stories being in the military. And then I, when I was in high school, I did the JROTC program. And so to me, it fit. 
This family history in the military helped Sergeant Delion Guerrero make her own transition to the military easier, but she also has a family of her own, husband Jack, son Riley, and daughter Rihanna. Renesha, the oldest daughter, is a student at Ali Amano Middle School and one of the writers on the story. I had my first daughter prior to me joining the military, so if I didn't have my husband and if he wasn't, you know, um, as supportive as he is, I probably wouldn't even have joined the military um, because of him and the great job he did, you know, as a father. I'm able to do the things that I want to do, which was join the military at the time, and still have my kids and not, I, I don't second guess anything. Long hours, a changing work schedule, weekend duty, and deployment overseas are not necessarily the biggest challenges that active duty mothers face. When my kids were young and I was gone, I always tried to make sure that I could send a part of me home to make sure that they remember me or, um, you know, I didn't want them to think that I abandoned them. Not being able to make first, you know, first days of school, um, not being able to be there for a program, um, not being able to be there when your child earns an award at school, you know, and you just have to live it through pictures and through stories, what your child or your, your husband would tell you. Being at home is a blessing for any military mom. Surprisingly, it was the little things that I missed the most. Um, I always kiss my kids before I leave in the morning for PT because they're still in bed, and I miss that. Um, and one thing too is just holding them and be able to smell them, you know? And my kids think I'm weird, but to this day, because of it, like, uh, random times, I just hug them and, like, kiss them and, like, you know. <laughs> As she reflects upon this life that she has chosen for her family, Sergeant Delion Guerrero has no regrets. You know, when one gate closes, another one opens. So the military, it has its ups and downs, and the moving, I, I personally like the moving. Um, but I could see from my kids, you know, wanting to be stabilized and stay in one place. For this military mom, the pieces seem to be falling into place. This is Johnny Parr from Aliamano Middle School for Hiki No. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created this story learned from their experience. Now, for a different look at the challenges facing deployed parents and their families. Here's a story from the Hiki no archives by students at Kainalu Elementary School in Windward, Oahu. United Through Reading is a program where a deployed parent could read to their child by sending home a DVD. This was a touching experience for Brayden and Kaylee. Uh, you read kids' books that they have on hand to, uh, onto a camera and they download it to a DVD and send it back to the family that they can watch uh, the videos of me reading a book to them. The first time they saw it, they were all excited. They knew what it was, staring at the television. And my daughter, who was five at the time, was actually saying, excuse me, excuse me, Dad. She thought she could talk to him. It was, it was so lifelike. And um, they were really excited about it. And then after a little while, they, they got upset. They, they realized how much they missed him. A program sponsored by the YMCA is Operation Kid Comfort. Oh, yeah, and I, I had this orange. It had pictures of me when I was, like, maybe about four and stuff. My son especially, he, he didn't want to go you know, to bed without it at night. I was worried because I thought he was going to have a crash. Brian and Kaylee's worries came to an end when their dad returned home. He flew in the plane and didn't even get crashed. I did shakas when I had my dad. Shaka. Master Gunnery Sergeant David Korf's family took in rescue dogs while he was deployed. We started fostering dogs because our dad was deployed in Afghanistan and we missed him a lot. It took my mind off my dad being gone and sometimes even forgot where he was. I would ask mom sometimes, where's dad? And she would say, he's deployed. And I was like, oh, right. And I would start crying. I felt really scared when my dad was deployed. I felt better when I had dogs around because the dogs took my mind off my dad. Having the dogs from the rescue that really helped occupy the time. The dogs had to be walked, they had to be fed. 
and so it just it helped pass that time in a very productive, helpful way. This is Leah, Allie, Kanoa, and Avery reporting for Kiki No. We're back at Hongwanji Mission School along the Pali Highway just north of downtown Honolulu. Some of the most popular classes among the middle school students are the electives. We started offering them in 2013. Eighth graders get first choice in picking electives, followed by seventh graders, then sixth graders. We have a wide variety of electives, including computer composition, where you build a computer from scratch, and online gaming, where you learn to game properly. Other classes of interest include taiko, Japanese culture, sewing, and swimming. The elective classes give students an opportunity to try different hands-on experiences. Our final story is by students at Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. They introduce us to a coach who uses tough life lessons from his past to inspire his players. Don't take things for granted um, because you never know when you're going to lose it. At the age of 19, Clarence Hollis made a costly decision that changed his life forever. In uh, May 5th, 1990. Uh, I was in a, a fight, um, which happened out in um, the Willy Willy. I landed on my head and fractured my cervical vertebrae. Left me paralyzed from the neck down at first. Um, but uh, a few months after that, I was able to gain use of some of my limbs, but till now I'm just paralyzed from the waist down. It's like walking through the tunnel after I broke my neck. I was like, you know what, are you going to sit in the middle of this tunnel? Or are you even going to start to walk through the tunnel to get to the other side? Or are you just going to stay here all your life, keep blaming everybody? Although Clarence lost the use of his legs, he did not lose hope and found his passion of coaching basketball. I first started coaching two years after my accident. It's a way for me to get out. You know, show other kids or show other adults that hey, it doesn't matter what, you know, what you have or what disability you have, you still can do it. What did we learn when we first started dribbling? He teaches his players not only basketball skills, but also lessons that they can use throughout their life. I teach my players a lot about life, you know, making choices, um, being accountable to yourself, commitment. Um, dedication. He goes beyond basketball as a lesson. He goes into life lessons, um, things like hard work, things like setting goals. He has a right idea of using athletics as a way to, to build a person as a whole, not just an athlete. He is an inspiration to his players because of his determination to teach basketball. He pushes us to work the best that we can. Yes, I am inspired by my dad. Since he's in the wheelchair, he can't do much things as others can, but he teaches me to never give up. Clarence Salas has learned important lessons from his experience and has become a better person from it. I had to learn to know that it was my decision. It was my choice. And once I realized that, and I also forgave the, the, the person that I fought with. That was the only time I could move forward and start walking through the tunnel. Even though he's in the wheelchair, uh, it did not stop him from doing all the things he wanted to do. Clarence Salas has faced many challenges, but as he said, he'll keep moving toward the light at the end of the tunnel. This is Taylor Nishimoto from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School for Hikino. Well, we've come to an end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learned from this experience. More proof that Hawaii's young people, Hiki No, can, can do! do.
Stay tuned after the credits to find out what students learn from their Hiki no experiences. When we do one set of editing and it comes back, I already my loosely, I can fix that. Or even when it's the final product and I see something, I'm like, I know I can fix that. So Hiki no has actually pushed me to just do better in what I do. In the Aliamano Middle School story on Military Moms, I was the reporter and the co-editor. My co-editor, Renatia Delion Guerrero, she was pretty much the main editor of the story, and it was about her mom. During the process, I would bring in a lot of baby pictures of me or, you know, B-roll at home. And Johnny's actually really respectful. He doesn't tease me for it, but he, like, will make a comment funny and then just drop it. With this story, it was very stressful because it was a lot of changes that happened. Like, you would be like, okay, we have a plan, and now we have a new plan, and then a new plan. Just over and over again until finally you got something together. There's always room for improvement. When we do one set of editing and it comes back, I already my see, I can fix that. Or even when it's the final product and I see something, I'm like, I know I can fix that. So Hikino is actually pushed me to just do better in what I do. They learn how it really is to be in the real world, I mean, getting their real world experiences, and uh, they felt an obligation to get that story out and get it on time. The experience was like walking for the first time. You don't have any experience in working with Kiki No. You fall several times, but in the end, you're able to walk perfectly fine, and you achieve victory. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.